We Indians are an emotional bunch. Very often when we as auto journalists shed light on what a car could do better or criticize it, people tend to get upset or even hostile. At the same time, we also have this tendency to romanticize cars that have left us only after they've already left us. But one car that had more or less the entire country rooting for it was the Tata Nano. An ambitious project that had the world talking about the most affordable mass-produced car and something that never truly achieved its potential of being nothing short of a Concord moment in India. And it feels like the time is ripe for its revival. But how? We must briefly take a look at why the Tata Nano wasn't well received, the all-encompassing reason being the car's image. If you were a two-wheeler owner, you were the primary target for the Tata Nano. And the idea was that don't play Tetris with your family on a bike, get a car. Tata's idea was bring safe mobility to Indians way before they were racking up the stars from Global NCAP. But the problem was the projection of the car as a cheap car. Even the Alto and Quid are affordable cars, but they've never been marketed as something cheap or meant for just pure affordability. With all the press about cheap car, affordable car, car for those who otherwise couldn't dream of owning one, the Tata Nano, which should have been a symbol of aspiration, got an undeserved air of desperation. The car may have been cheap, but if you were a two-wheeler or a bike owner, it was still an aspirational product. And where's the fun in that without the prestige? And for those who wanted a second car, there were other oddities like the complex fuel lid access, the low cost interior quality, how noisy it got inside and the tricky boot access. Furthermore, it was affected by the plans changing from the production in Singur, the project getting delayed big time, costs being raised exponentially and those reports of the cars catching fire which gave it so much more bad press. And let's not forget, the Tata Nano was marketed as the 1 lakh rupee car but it wasn't really at that price, was it? It was much more than that and prices kept rising. So people figured if I am paying more, why don't I stretch a bit more, wait for a bit longer and get a car that's more polished. So why should it come back? Well, it's because the requirement of an affordable mass market car is still strong as ever and Tata Motors has never been any stronger. And the biggest weapon that they have in their arsenal is the need of the hour, electric. Tata Motors has been at the forefront of mass market EVs with the introduction of many successful models like the Nexon EV and the Tigor EV and the expected launches of the Punch EV, Altros EV, Curve EV and even the Avenia. The Nano presents an opportunity to capture the hottest space of them all, the sub 10 lakh rupee price space. And they can do it by sticking to the basics but changing how it's presented. Step 1. Keep the Nano just as practical. Make it a good 4-seater, give it a reasonable amount of headroom and good storage space as well. Step 2. Give it a certified range of at least 250 to 300 kilometers and offer it with tempered performance or drive modes with good regen capabilities so the real world range is achievable. BYD had done something similar with the E6 electric MPV wherein the performance won't blow you away but it doesn't compromise usability either. Step 3. Frills available but not mandatory. No variants, just give it one basic version that's available with stuff like air conditioning, power windows, adjustable mirrors and a proper boot. Leave all other upgrades as personalization options that customers can opt for. This will help Tata keep the purchase price low and also give people flexibility with the way they spec their car. And most of these need to be dealer level add-ons so it doesn't complicate the production process or give you variants that are only existing on paper. Step 4. Market the purpose, not the price. Cars have basically become devices now, so play into it. Don't make the car about adventure seeking, finding yourself or standing out in the boardroom. Just make it the coolest toy ever that just happens to be a very sensible city car. Take it to the office, pop to the grocery store, head to the gym or take the kids to school. Make it a sensible but fun city car and then drop the cherry on top. The price. Rupees 1 lakh? That's almost how much an Activa costs now, so no. But how about rupees 4.5 to 5 lakh as a starting base price? That could just hit the spot. And step 5. Make its appeal neutral. Target the rich so they look at it as their second car. Make it quirky so it's a conversation piece and it's looked upon favorably. All the while, when people who just want an affordable electric car can take a look at it and go, Hey, this actually makes a lot of sense. Of course, all of this is easier said than done. 
and one important reason why we haven't seen the introduction of an affordable electric car, something that costs less than rupees 10 lakh, is because of batteries, which we as a country are not making at scale just yet. But we are looking to change and reduce our dependence on imports in this front, which could eventually make an affordable electric car less financially daunting to produce. But it seems like the EV revolution is exactly what is needed for the revival of a car or a concept like the Tata Nano. And this isn't us telling Tata Motors what they need to do, but our attempt at getting a discussion going as to what Tata or indeed anyone could do to target the budget electric car space. If you agree or disagree with any of the points made in this video, go ahead, let us know in the comment section down below. We need to know your thoughts and that also counts down to if you like this video or not. If you didn't, give it a dislike. If you did, give it a like, share it as well and hit subscribe if you have not already. Why haven't you already? Just do it. Come on. Do it. Hit the button. Hit the button.